Happy New Year and welcome to the Run It Back podcast. I'm Jeff and that's my good friend Parnell and this is episode 37 in the place where we have real and raw conversations that are relevant to your life in Christ. This episode, the first one of 2023, we are going to talk about prayer and effective prayer. But before we do that, we ask a couple things of you. First, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos Every Friday morning at 6 a.m. and you want to be notified, you can watch them live as they drop or you can watch them on replay, but you want to know that they drop. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and then over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, give us a rating and review and hit that share button. Share it out to your social media, text it to a friend. Uh, Let's continue to build this community as God continues to move and speak here through the Run It Back podcast. We are grateful for it. Parnell, it's a new year, but it's the same season. We're working 37 episodes in. It's been a great ride, but I don't want to ask you about that. Uh, I want to ask you about New Year. I, I'm guessing that you are a guy that doesn't have New Year resolutions. I think I just know you that well, but let's <laughs> let's hear it from the man himself. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I don't have New Year's resolutions. You know, there's like, there's some things that I want to accomplish Right. There's hmm. there's approaches that I want to take. Um, and, you know, I've, I think that having kind of a, a new like a new start, a turnover on the calendar, if you will, it gives people mentally this this, um, you know, this confidence and security and this in in, um, in this freshness of doing something new and accomplishing that goal. Um but yeah, no, I don't have any New Year's resolutions. I mean, I'd like to, you know, prayerfully lose some weight this year, get in shape for sure. Uh, you know, but like, I believe God is doing something new, right? I believe I believe God doesn't operate on our manly uh, calendars. And when I say manly calendars, man-made calendars, not our manly calendars, but our man-made calendars. <laughs> you know, God operates on his uh, on His own terms. And for for a while now, man, I feel like we've been in this season, and we're we're definitely entering a season of new. God's doing something new, something fresh, and He's reviving His people. So if I get excited about anything, it's uh, it's this season that the Holy Spirit is is um, is leading and guiding His people in. I was right. You don't have New Year's resolutions. I know you well. See, if anyone ever doubted, we did not talk about that in advance. So <laughs> I just I know my brother well. <laughs> uh, well, I will say, you know, you you're exactly right. You you don't have to wait for a new year um, to to intentionally accomplish and do the things you want to do and focus on the things that you need to focus on. You know, God's mercies are new every morning. So why wait for the calendar to flip when you can actually start brand new every moment, every morning. And even in the moment, you know, the moment that we repent, the moment that we turn to Jesus. But all that being said, you know, we did use 2023 to kind of set some personal family goals. And so we're doing some things uh, together intentionally that, uh, you know, reading through the Bible with a, a podcast and a Bible reading plan. And so we're also have changed some, some things, just our habits and water consumption. I'm drinking a lot more water. And so uh, lots of trips to the restroom, but also feeling better. So yeah, you got your jug. I got my jug too. So we're the, we, hey, we made cheers. the, the running back water boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do wish you a, a happy and blessed new year. And we want to jump right into this conversation. Um, as you probably know, um, and if you don't know, we'll bring it to your attention. But there was a, a pretty tragic moment that unfolded this m- past Monday night on Monday Night Football uh, when a member of the Buffalo Bills um, had a, a cardiac arrest on the field and fell to the ground and had to be. Uh, CPR induced on the field and um, is still in a coma in an in induced coma as we record this podcast on Wednesday. Uh, so a, a pretty heavy moment that unfolded. And so in the coming days, as um, commentators discuss what had happened and shared their opinion and thoughts and broke it all down, um, there was an ESPN commentator na- named Dan Orlaski um, that prayed on on air on ESPN. Um, and so we're going to take a look at that clip right now of Dan Orlaski praying And then we'll come and break it down. So check out this clip from NFL Live. You know, like, this is a little bit different. I heard, I've heard it all day, like thoughts and prayers. And you just heard Scherf and Jonathan Allen say, like, all we can do is pray for him. And I've heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that we believe in prayer. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want, it's just on my heart that I want to pray for him. It is. 
Lamar Hamlin right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that you're God, and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're, we're sad. We're angry. Um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up Damar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 There you have it, Dan Orlovsky. Praying live on NFL Live on ESPN, a huge network with lots of people watching. Parnell, what's your reaction? Yeah, well, f- well first of all, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, Demar Hamlin. Uh, le- legitimately, uh, we're praying for the the family for him to recuperate, to recover. Uh, it was a tragic to see a witness, and I was actually watching that game live with my boys uh, when it happened. And you know, you expect you know, him to pop up and which he did obviously after the hit. Yeah. Uh, but then after, after he fell, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's, a, it's a scene that's happened, uh, on, on a couple of different occasions, not to that magnitude this year, several players have collapsed and, and, uh, and have had some health issues. And so, um, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's completely tragic and we're praying for the, uh, for the family. And, um, I think the NFL made the right call in terms of canceling the game and all of that, but, uh, in terms of the in terms of uh, the reporter praying, you know, when I first seen that, because uh, I, I seen a link that led to that, and as soon as I seen the opening prayer, I was like, "Wow, this is amazing! This is this is unprecedented! This is this is super dope right here." And at the end, uh, you know, the the reporter mentioned, uh, you know, the the Buffalo Bills uh, player's name, and then. Close the prayer in in your name. You're not in your name, Jeff, but in right. I assume God's name. And I think what makes that dangerous is you can kind of leave that up to interpretation. Now on the reporter's uh, you know, Twitter, he claims to be a Jesus follower. And like I'm not one to get first of all, I'm not one to point the finger and be like, Oh, you're not a real Christian and and uh, you know, judging actions, but like I just believe that for whatever reason, there could have been an opportunity missed to proclaim the name of Jesus, to proclaim the name of Jesus live in front of the in front of the entire world. Right. And so we live in this era when tragedy happens. Two things happens. We put the prayer emoji signs and, and we say mm-hmm. prayers, 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 prayers. Um, and that's our response. And then with that. We always there seems to be collectively around the globe, around the world, around our country specifically, a, a tragedy that takes place that brings people to, to to this place of crying out for God. So after September 11th, mm. uh, when the when the towers went down, uh, you know Sunday services were filled with people looking for hope, and I All think right. that's very telling. I honestly believe that's very telling because we were created for Him. We were created for the most high. We were created for the creator, for God. And so deep down, we're, we're made with this DNA to long for God, to worship God. And when people have that missing and there's a tragedy that takes mm-hmm. place, they're searching for that gap and that void in their life that they don't know, can't recognize that's there because we were designed to worship God. And so I say all of that, Jeff, to say when I seen that prayer, I was like, that's super dope. But I believe there was an opportunity missed to proclaim the mm. name of Jesus. Now, the enemy, his job is to to deceive, and he works in deception. He's he'll, he'll take a lot of truth and mix a little lie. And if I tell my boys this all the time, if you have a lie that's this big, and you have a lie this big, which one is bigger? Well, mm. they, they 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 equate to the same. They equate to the same thing. And so Matthew 24, 24 says this, For false messiahs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Verse 25 says, Take note, I have told you that in advance. And so um, and there's some context that comes with that. But what I love about that scripture is that 
we know that the enemy comes to deceive, and I don't, I don't know where this reporter's heart was. I'm not saying that he was intentionally trying to to deceive people. All I'm saying is we have a lot of people online responding to how amazing it was for that reporter to pray uh, live, and I just believe that there was an opportunity missed to proclaim Jesus. One, and if you're not praying in Jesus's name. Like, does that leave room for deception and does that leave room for interpretation to the, the God of the universe and all this mysticism and different things of that nature? And um, so, yeah, that's kind of my initial my initial response. Like you, I've been back and forth on this thing, and I'm not really sure if I know exactly where I'm landed. I, I can I can see it a lot of different ways, and I think there's health in having discussions and you know asking other people, people you trust, people of, of faith, like you and my pastor, who I've talked to about with this situation. You know, just to kind of you know begin to wrestle with and then seek God and ask Him to help us understand what's happened here. And so, like you, when I first saw it, I was like, man, that is really awesome to have a prayer on live TV and a place ESPN, a platform where millions of people are watching and, and we don't see, you know, faith proclaimed. Um, but that at the same time, as you said, um, it was, I think it was a missed opportunity as well uh, to proclaim the name of Jesus over this young man's life, to proclaim Jesus and healing in his name, to pray to the father in the name of Jesus. You know, there were just some things missing. And so I had then, I just had to then begin to, to process. Okay. He, I think he missed an opportunity, um, but, but who was he praying to and was it an effective prayer? Um, and so that's where I think that's where his conversation is going to begin to go. I was encouraged uh, that his Twitter profile says he's a follower of Jesus. And so that's, that's good. I don't believe he was trying to pray, you know, to a Hindu God or the mother God of the universe or whoever else, you know, although there are many gods out there. And I think that a lot of this conversation is for us to just have our eyes open um, to realize that we don't all have the same Lord. We don't all have the same God. There are many different, actually Christianity is not the number one religion in the world. And so we need to be aware of this and the, the enemy is going to work to deceive, as you said. And so we need to be aware of this, but when it comes to prayer, um, you know, the Bible tells us in James five sixteen that there's effective prayer. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Um, so if there's effective prayer, then that also means that there's ineffective prayer. And that's a place that I, I really want to talk about because I think a lot of people, a lot of Christians um, maybe haven't been um, taught, haven't been taught in the right way, haven't um, dove into enough scripture to understand how to pray effectively because we can pray ineffectively. We have to understand that our prayers are made righteous and actually go through Jesus Christ himself. He gives us access to the father. You know, we, we have Amen. no righteousness. We have, we have no connection. We have no path to, to God without Christ, but in Christ we do. And so we need to know that as we pray. And so I'm with you, you know, I think it was a missed opportunity. My prayer is that, um, you know, the commentator is a follower of Jesus would even, you know, come out and, and maybe, you know, just, um, make it clear, you know, whose name he was praying in or, or, you know, at least uh, share, you know, what he, what he maybe could have said in the moment. I, I do applaud his boldness uh, to do that. I would imagine that probably ESPN frowned upon that would be my guess. Um, so I do applaud his boldness, but I just wish it would have been more of an effective prayer because, you know, without proclaiming the name of Jesus, um, you know, they, they just words, they just become words. And I don't believe it could be as effective as it, as it should have been. Yeah, you know, a couple of things with that. We don't know, um, you know, we don't know the ramifications if he would have proclaimed Jesus's name, right? And so maybe in him knowing mm. that, that was a that was a um, you know a mechanism or self defense me uh, mechanism to to right. uh, pray without ram ramifications. You know, it almost makes you wonder if he would have proclaimed the name of Jesus, would he had a would, would he have had a job? Right, the next day, what that would have looked like. Right, yeah. And then we also got to understand who ESPN is owned by, you know, Disney. And there's not a lot of things that Disney does that's unintentional. You know, uh, Disney and, and uh, their partners, uh, they're very intentional with what they do. And I just believe that's why we have to be very aware, you know. And like I said, I mean, this is something that's being applauded across my social media feed in terms of his boldness. But if you're not proclaiming the name of Jesus, is it really boldness? And that's not like that's not that's not me like 
I know it sounds like me casting stones and judging. I'm, I'm not trying to, but at the same time, like you know, if we're if we're going to get to that place, right? If we're going to get to that place where we're gonna we're gonna jump for Jesus, bro, we better we better nosedive for Jesus. We better we better go all out for Jesus, and that's a place where I believe uh, God has called us to is to go all out. So, um, you know, maybe the restraint was there because. Uh, you know, because of, uh, because there could have been ramifications, you know, and just going back to that, you know, you know, I, I think that, and I believe that the enemy has a counterfeit for everything that God does. He's wanted to be God from the very beginning. Yeah. And again, he comes as an angel of what? He comes as an angel of light. The enemy comes as an angel of light. The Bible describes and says, and so, as we move into these last days, there's going to be a great deception where people are going to to just be wooed and and, and see these these signs and, and miracles and these levels of boldness as 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 we've seen and witnessed and and it just you know Jeff I mean this is a little bit of a bunny trail and you know me I'm always got my backpack ready to to go <laughs> hiking down a bunny trail but you know even we got we got to do a show on or we got to do a, an episode on the chosen i really want to dive into that with you that that conversation with you because you know there's a lot of people that um are really enjoying this show the chosen and i've seen some clips from it and they're amazing clips absolutely amazing clips and inspiring encouraging um you know but again if the if the enemy comes as an angel of light you know wouldn't the enemy wouldn't it be like the enemy to infiltrate the church in a lot of ways, wouldn't it be like the enemy to present himself as, you know, something that is, that is godly without, uh, with lacking the power, um, the real power of God, you know? And so even with shows like the chosen, the things that are red flags to me with a show like that is because, you know, a lot of times, and I've heard of people getting saved through the chosen, and so by watching the chosen and encouraged to have a relationship with Jesus, and so I think there's so many, like there's so much value to that. But my my hesitancy, I always have like these red flags and, and, and hesitancies, is that could people replace this thing right here, the Word of God, with a show like the chosen? You know, could more hmm. people, because of the the bold prayer that the reporter prayed, could more people, you know, uh pray, you know, uh, without utilizing the name of Jesus and just limit the power of prayer to emojis and just praying without the power of the name of Jesus. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of this like last day deception is because it's this like unified effort. And, you know, there was millions of people watching that game that had that same heart that was like, man, we are thanking for this young man, you know, prayerfully folks got on their knees and prayed for this individual prayerfully. They didn't leave it at the emoji or prayers without literally like our, our knees should be weak from praying for God's people. That's a hip hop line from, uh, if I think of the artist, I'll let you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, our knees should be weak from, from like praying for God's people and seeking him on behalf of God's people. And that's my rub with uh, you know, that's my rub with the, 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 uh, the ESPN analyst, that's my rub with the chosen is it could be a substitute or a counterfeit for the real thing. We've got to measure everything against the word. We have to do that. And that is the place that we go. Even, you know, we've talked about even when your pastor shares a message, you know, or writes something online, we should compare everything uh, to the word and, and see if it's confirmed by God's word. And if it's not, then we can dismiss it. If it is, then, you know, we can understand that, okay, that's truth. And so um, it's very easy to, uh, just be a, a degree off and one degree off, you know, one little deception can be a lie. And so we need to be able to recognize those things. And the Holy Spirit helps us, you know, thank God that he helps us. But, you know, uh, several thoughts. First of all, people, you can say God all day long and people are not offended, but you say the name of Jesus and all of a sudden you have changed the game. And so when you start saying Jesus, proclaiming Jesus, speaking Jesus, it offends people. Um, it makes you a target of the enemy, and it actually makes you hated. And so when we say Jesus, it is different than when we proclaim God. And because there are a lot of people that have a lot of different meanings and interpretations of God, even though there is only one God, God the Most High of Scripture, um, 
there are many people that have different gods. And so, but you say Jesus, uh, that is a particular person and people know who that is. And so that becomes offensive. And so we got to make sure that it is Jesus um, who is, whose name that we pray in. Um, and he's the one that we have access to the, to the father or through. Um, and also, you know, as you said, you know, people that say thoughts and prayers, um, first of all, you know, thoughts, I, I don't need you to think for me, you know, when you have a thought about me, uh, I need you to pray for me. <laughs> you know, your, your thought, your thought doesn't do anything. I guess it's a kind gesture, all, but it doesn't affect anything. You know, prayer, prayer touches the ear of God. It moves heaven when we pray effectively in Jesus name. I, I want people on my behalf, you know, as I just maneuver through this life and do ministry and try to be a good husband and a dad um, and try to follow Jesus the best that I can. I want people to pray for me in the name of Jesus Christ and believe heaven on my behalf in faith. That's what I want. I don't want good vibes or good thoughts or whatever, you know? And so that's, that's just, that's one of those things, man, it, it gets under my skin. I, I just, uh, I don't know. I want to go off and I don't, um, you know, I keep scrolling, but when I see that, I'm like, that's, that's not helpful, you know? And so, and also people that say, you know, praying, are you really praying? I want to encourage Christians when you say you're praying for someone and I do this, I, I learned this discipline. When I say praying, I stop right then and pray because life gets busy and I've got another task. And so I may forget to pray and it may not be intentional. If you say to someone you're praying, do it and do it immediately Amen. and pray effectively, you know? And, and so there's a lot of this frivolous stuff online and this is the stuff that we have to navigate through. As you talked about, we have to navigate through this phony fake facade type of praying, um, praying to God, you know, seeking God, sending you good vibes. Like we have to be able to navigate through all these things. And so, you know, people's fruit, the fruit of their life will speak. Um, so you can, you can see, you can see what, how a person lives and what they stand for, um, and how they prioritize things in their life. And so again, I'm prayerful that the commentator is a disciple of Christ and, you know, just, just didn't deliver the prayer. And, and it could be pressure. It could be a lot of different things. And as I said, the name of Jesus, I can guarantee that ESPN doesn't want his name on their airways. You hit the nail on the head, you know, Philippians two, nine through 11, it says this, it says for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that the name of Jesus Every knee will bow and in heaven and on earth and every uh, tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. And so I think about that moment, man, I think about that analyst jumping into the prayer and I'm like, oh, goodness, here we go. My, <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped up. My heart's racing. And it almost as if there was intentionality at the end of that to not use Jesus's name. And that was my rub. If you watch the end of that interview that we just played, there was it, it seemed very intentional to not use Jesus's name. And so for me, that was a red flag. Uh, jumped out at maybe not a red flag, but definitely jumped out at me. And I thought it was, you know, we, Jeff and I both thought it was worth the conversation. This is just a conversation. This isn't yeah. again me right. me uh, me bashing, but this I do know. This I do know, and this is. This is what I'll stand firm on. I'm sure Jeff can say he'll stand firm on is that verse nine in Philippians chapter two, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Whose name is that? Verse 10 says, so that at the name of Jesus, every name, mm. uh, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and uh, under earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the father. And that's what I was hoping for in that moment. Yeah. Um, but listen, folks, there's going to be other opportunities to proclaim the name of Jesus. And for the believer out there that's watching this, don't be ashamed of his name. You will get ridiculed, right? You will get mocked. Uh, yep. There could be persecution. That could mean, you know, your job and, and, and possibly in this analyst's case, uh, that's why there was that intentionality there because we have to come face to face with, oh man, there's going to be consequences if i if i proclaim jesus um my encouragement is to proclaim jesus to live for jesus unashamedly and you know god will meet all your needs according to to his riches and glory you know so there's not going to be a season that we go through as we proclaim the name of jesus that our needs won't be met because that's that's the god we serve it doesn't mean that we're always on the mountaintop Sometimes we're in this valley, if I can get my direction right, but it means that God's with us and that all of our needs are, are met 
whether we're down here or up here. It is the name above every name, and it's the name that gives us access to the Father, as we've been talking about. I want to share just a few verses because at the end of the day, you know, it's our heart for people of Christ to know how to pray effectively. And it's not our idea. It's how Scripture has instructed us. So just to share a couple things, and, and Parno, I'm glad that you said, you know, it's not our heart. Uh, to bash anyone or to to question someone's faith or anything, you know, it's just to point out these things to say, let's have our eyes open and let's make sure that when as we as we walk through this world, um, that we are comparing everything to Scripture and that we are Amen. just, you know, we are we are aware that things can be deceitful and that the enemy can work in many different ways, including even through people of faith. So we need to be aware of these things. But let's just go to Scripture. I want to share some verses with you um, as we talk about praying effectively. First Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. And so he is the med- mediator. He's the Amen. bridge. He's the way that we get to the Father. And so when we pray, we pray through Jesus Christ. We pray to God the Father through Jesus John 16, 23 and 24. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you whose name in Jesus's name, whatever you ask in his name, he will give you until now. You've asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. And so this is where you can see some people say, OK, well, I'll ask for whatever I want. You know, I need a new whip. I need um more money in my bank account. I need a bigger house. I need all these things. And so I can just say, in Jesus' name, I'm going to receive these things. Well, let's go back to Scripture. First John 5, 14 through 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So now we really dive into the Amen. meat of how mm. to pray, how to pray mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus according to to his will. How do I know his will? His will is in his word. How do I know his word? I've got to meditate on it. I've got to spend time in it. I've got to abide in Christ. And now all of a sudden, the will of God becomes my will. I pray his will because that's what I desire. I've become like him. My identity is in him and my life is in him. And everything that I desire, even things that are are difficult and hard and challenging, if it's the will of God, I want it for my life. And so this is how we pray effectively in the name of Jesus, according to his will. And so that's my encouragement for our our listeners. You know, as you pray, we want to be effective prayers. We want to be, see God move. We want to see his hand in our lives. We want to see signs, wonders, supernatural things. We've got to pray in the name of Jesus and according to his will. Amen. And you know what you did, Jeff, right there? You let scripture interpret scripture. You didn't, you just use one scripture, right? You utilize the scripture based on the mouths of two or three witnesses. You allowed scripture to interpret scripture, man. And I think that's, that's so important, you know? And so we pray that this conversation has uh, been beneficial to you. Uh, We're literally going to pray that in just a minute, that this conversation and these conversations are beneficial to you, uh, that they're challenging to you. We're not saying that we have the answers uh, and, and, and forgive us if there's ever a moment where forgive me, if there's ever a moment that, you know, we come off like we have the answers and this is right and this is wrong. And, and, but what we're doing is opening these conversations honestly in front of everybody and just wrestling uh, together with the scriptures to find out what does God's word say about this? So we can, we can, um, we can walk in his truth in our every day life. Before we let you go, Jeff, I'm going to ask that you, uh, pray us out, pray that these conversations are uh, impacting uh, the viewers, but then also pray for this young man um, that is uh, that that that's in the hospital and that's fighting for for his life. And and uh, just my 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 hope is that you you know um, you know that that he has a realization of who God is if he doesn't already. So yeah, and you know uh, just lead us in prayer, brother, if you will. Well, Father, we love you. We worship the name of Jesus. We exalt. Jesus, we thank you that we find our life, our hope, our our identity, everything that we are is in Jesus Christ, and we thank you for it. And God, I just thank you that you are near, that you are with us, and that you are for us. And God, we have your word to understand your character, your heart, and your design and plan for all of our lives. And 
Lord, we just pray for this young man, Damar Hamlin. Lord, we just thank you um, that you are near to him, that, that your presence is a comfort to his family and to his loved ones. And Lord, we just thank you that your son, Jesus, uh, bore stripes on his back. He was suffered. He was bruised and beaten so that we could be healed by faith in the name of Jesus. So we just pray for Damar right now. We just pray that his lungs and capacity of his heart and everything would just begin to work properly according to your will, Lord God, that his just body would be obedient to your word and that he would just be recovered in that in that place right now, that it would be to your glory, God, that people would see um, Jesus glorified in what happens in this young man's life um, right now. And God, we just thank you um, that a world, um, a world um, can see Jesus glorified in this situation. And God, I just pray um, for for those that are watching and listening, um, even for ourselves, Lord God, help us to be effective in the way that we live for you. Lord, I just pray that we continue to grow in our understanding of your word, that Lord, we continue to grow in our understanding of who we are in Christ um, and the path that you have for us, God. We want to be in the middle of your will. And so, Lord, may we in this in this time of this year, God, as it be, you know, we, we turn the clock and we know there's nothing special about a new year, but there is something special about being intentional about how we're living. So God, help us to be intentional with our time in you. Help us to be intentional with the way that we love others, God, and just help us to make the most of every breath that we have, God. We, we know that life is but a vapor, but Lord, we know that we have a purpose right now in this season that you've placed us on this earth. So help us, God, to live for your glory, and we'll be sure, God, to give you all honor and all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen, amen. Well, guys, it's such a blessing to be with you. Let me put my hat back on. When I don't shave, I have to have the hat on so you can't see my extremely, increasingly receding hairline. But we're so thankful that you joined (laughs) us for another episode of the Run It Back podcast. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you're notified every Friday when we come on at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's my alarm, Jeff, is when I got my volume on and, uh, you know, I, I get that notification that the, the the podcast is coming on. I'm able to wake up and uh, get my day started off right with the Running Back podcast. So anyway, guys, we love you. We appreciate you. We're praying for you in this new year, and we pray that God would reveal himself to you uh, through his word in Jesus' name. We love you all. We'll see Amen. you soon. God bless. Figured that I never knew him.